Let us start off by repeating what we find on the screen. Together now. I am created in the likeness and image of God. Therefore, whatever God is, I am. And this is the truth about me. It was the truth last Sunday. It's the truth this Sunday. It'll be the truth next Sunday and all Sundays. Every day, every minute of every day. In the last several Sundays, I've been doing a series, whether you realized it or not, on the characteristics of God's teachers. And I'm going to wrap it up today. <clears throat> let's review a little bit, back up and review a little bit, and uh, then let's talk about who are God's teachers, and then who are their pupils. And then let's give thanksgiving for all that we have and are. The role of teaching and learning is actually reversed in the thinking of the world through the ego's mind. It seems as if the teacher and the learner are separate. The teacher giving something to the learner rather than to himself. Further, the act of teaching is regarded as a special activity in which one engages only a relatively small portion of one's time. The Course in Miracles, on the other hand, emphasizes that to teach is to learn, and so that teacher and learner are the same. We just switch roles at different times. It also emphasizes that teaching is a constant process. It goes on every moment of the day and continues even in our sleeping thoughts as well. To teach is to demonstrate. To demonstrate what you think and what you really believe. Remember there's only two thought systems and you demonstrate that you believe one or the other is true all of the time. From your demonstration, others learn, and so do you. You reinforce your learning from yourself. The purpose of A Course in Miracles might be said to provide you with a means of choosing what you want to teach on the basis of what you want to learn. Now, Jesus gave us all of this when he was here walking the plains of this existence, but he clarifies it a whole lot more in A Course in Miracles. You cannot give to someone else, he tells us and explains to us, but only to yourself. What we think we're giving to somebody else, we're really giving to ourselves. And we learn this or reinforce this through what we teach. Teaching is a call to witness to what you believe. You don't teach what you don't believe. You teach others what you believe. It's a method of conversation. And this is not done by words alone. Any situation must be to you a chance to teach others what you are and what they are to you. The curriculum you set up, therefore, is determined exclusively by what you think you are because that's all you can teach. That's the only place you can come from is from where you think you are or what you think you are and what you believe your relationship to others is. Who are they? And that's what we teach from. In the formal teaching situation, these questions may be totally unrelated to what you think you are teaching. Yet it is impossible not to use the content of any situation on behalf of what you really teach, therefore what you really are teaching yourself. The verbal content of what you teach at times is quite irrelevant. It may coincide with what you're supposed to be teaching, or it may not. 
It is the teaching underlying what you say that teaches you. Remember the old adage, what you do speaks so loud, I can't hear what you say? That's what we're talking about. We act out all the time what we believe, and that's what we're teaching to others. Teaching reinforces what you believe about yourself. Its fundamental purpose is to diminish your self-doubt. This does not mean that the self you are trying to protect is real, but it does mean that the self you think is real is what you teach. This is inevitable because you can't teach what you don't think you are. There's no escape from this. How could it be otherwise? For everyone who follows the world's curriculum or the world's thought process and everyone here does follow it until we choose to change our mind. We teach solely to convince ourselves that I am what I am not. The ego reinforces that. The ego will give you ample reasons for you to defend who you think you are, which can be and is totally opposite who God created you as. This is the purpose of the world. What else then would its curriculum be? Into this hopeless and closed learning situation, which teaches nothing but despair and death, God sends his teachers to teach us otherwise. Remember last week we were talking about the apostles, and that was their job. They were teachers of God. And they really ran away from him during the crucifixion and left him by himself. And as they teach his lessons of joy and love, the teachers of God, their learning finally becomes complete. So we're going to teach till we get it right. And we'll teach amiss until we change our minds about our teachings. Except for God's teachers... There would be little hope of salvation. For the world of error thinking would seem real forever. And the voice of the world, which is ego's voice, would seem to us to be the only real voice that there is. The self-deceiving must deceive. Self-deceiving is us. And we must deceive. For they will and must teach deception, because that's who we think we are. They are not perfect, or they would not be here. Yet it is their mission to become perfect here. I've often reminded you of the fact that we don't wake up by dying. We wake up by realizing who we really are. And that happens right here while we're here and so they teach perfection over and over in many many ways until they have learned it and that's what all of us will do who are the teachers a teacher of God is anyone who chooses to be one that's simple his qualifications consist solely in this Somehow, somewhere, he's made a deliberate choice in which he did not see his interest as apart from someone else's. When we start seeing the oneness in each other, when we start seeing that there's no difference between any of us except in the worldly look or physical appearance, once they have done that, their road is established and their direction is sure once we start seeing our oneness. A light has then entered their darkness. It may be a single light. It might be just a spark. But that's enough. He has entered in agreement with God, even if he does not yet believe in him. Believing as God is not a prerequisite to becoming a teacher. They have become a bringer of salvation or right thinking. They have become then a teacher of God. 
God's teachers come from all over the world. They come from all religions and from no religions at all. They are the ones who have answered the call to be a teacher. It goes on all the time, everywhere. It calls for teachers to speak for it and redeem the world. Many hear it, but few will answer. In the Bible it says all are called. Yet it is all just a matter of time. I love the beginning statement in A Course in Miracles where it says this is a required course. Only the time you choose to take it is optional. And that's universal. It doesn't talk about and mean that that particular book or what's contained in it. It's talking about the universal curriculum of the oneness of the Christ thought process. The beautiful thing to me is we will all answer it in the end because that which God creates and created has eternal life. That's us. That's the spiritual part of us that has eternal life. Cannot change, cannot die. That's the spiritual part of us. That's our oneness with God. There is a course or a, a role for every teacher of God, for every one of us will fill this role ultimately. The form of the path that you have chosen to take varies greatly among us. So do the particular teaching aids involved. But the content of the course never changes. Its central theme is always God's son is guiltless, and in his innocence is his salvation. It can be taught by actions or thoughts, in words or soundlessly, in any language or in no language, in any place, time, or manner. It does not matter who the teacher was, before he heard the call. So many people depreciate themselves and undervalue who they really are as being created in the likeness and image of God. In the Old Testament specifically, who did God call on to the chagrin of most others? The scum of society to those people then. But it does not matter who the teacher, what, what the teacher was before he heard the call. He has seen someone else as himself. And it dawns on their mind of the oneness that we are with each other. It's easy for us to separate out the actions of ISIS right now. But I'm reminded of Jesus hanging on the cross and looking out over the crowd and saying, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they're doing. Those people haven't got a clue as to what they're doing. Not a clue. They have not seen someone else as themselves. They see the duality. They see the division. There are many thousands of other forms that teachers can take. But I'll remind you that all roads lead to God. All with the same outcome. They merely save time. Time and space is an invention of the ego. In heaven, there is no such thing as time. It's a continuum. There's no duality. In A Course in Miracles, Jesus tells us, he said there's many different courses, but he says this one can save you time, millions of years, thousands of years. Yet it is time alone that winds on wearily, and the world is very tired now. We get tired of it. It is old and worn out and without hope. There was never a question of the outcome 
of where we are for what can change the will of God. What can change what God created? What can change what God wills? We can delay it in our thought, but we can't change it. But time with its illusions of change and death wears out the world and all things in it. Yet time has an ending. And it is this that the teachers of God are appointed to bring about. That's what we're to wake up and realize as a teacher of God. For time is in the hands of the teachers and all are called. Such was those who answered the call. It was their choice. And it is given them to accomplish. And everything they need to accomplish it with is theirs. That's the teachers. Who are the pupils? Certain pupils have been assigned to each of God's teachers. And they will begin to look for them as soon as the teacher has answered the call and becomes a teacher. Laura, I can't help but remember when you published one of your first articles or the Pathways of Light did, and you had this lady that responded to you by email. She was waiting on you to answer the call. She was one of your pupils that was waiting to contact her teacher. What did it end up doing? Switching roles. She became the teacher, and here's the pupil. There's no difference in it. We're all teachers. We're all pupils. We play different roles at different times. They were chosen for them because the form of the curriculum that he will teach is best for them at that time in view of their level of understanding. So as a pupil, you will be sent to the teacher that can take care of teaching you at that time based on your level of understanding. If that doesn't happen, you're not ready. It doesn't matter. Pass it on. His pupils have been waiting for him, for his coming is certain. Again, it's only a matter of time. And once he or she has chosen to fulfill his role, they are ready to fulfill theirs. Time waits on his choice, but not on whom he or she will serve. The pupils are there. The teacher is waiting. When you are ready to learn, the opportunities to teach will be provided. When pupil and teacher come together, a teaching-learning situation begins. For the teacher is not really the one who does the teaching. God's teacher speaks to any two who join together for learning purposes. Remember, where two or more are gathered, the Holy Spirit will be there with you. The relationship is holy because of that purpose, and God has promised to send his Spirit into any holy relationship. In the teaching-learning situation, each one learns that giving and receiving are the same. The demarcations they have drawn between their roles, their minds, their bodies, their needs, their interests, and all the differences they thought that separated them from one another fade and grow dim and ultimately disappear. Those who would learn the same course or same path share one interest and one goal. It might even be unconscious to you of what it is. And thus he who was the learner becomes a teacher, a teacher of God himself. For he has made the one decision that gave his teacher to him. He has seen in another person the same interest as his own. The idea of we're one. There is oneness. On your bulletin today, just 
turn over to the inside cover there. I'm talking about gratitude. It says gratitude unlocks the fullness of life, being thankful for who we are. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order, confusion to charity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. Be grateful. And on this Sunday before Thanksgiving, the day that we celebrate our Thanksgiving, for everything that we have and celebrate in this great country of ours, we are to be grateful and thanksgiving to God for who we are, who we are created as, and the realization of the oneness that we are with each other. Thank you, God. Let us pray. For our oneness, dear God, we give you thanks for the gratitude that we show and express this day in thanksgiving for all that we have, all that we can share, for the sharing that we can have with each other this day. We give you thanks in his name. Amen.